Item number, SCP-381. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-381 is to be kept in a 23 by 31 centimeter document envelope in storage unit five. Further containment procedure is not necessary under non-testing conditions. Non-Roman Catholic Christian, i.e. any Protestant denomination, research staff are not permitted to perform tests on SCP-381 due to risk of combustion. Other Abrahamic or non-religious personnel are not at risk. Description SCP-381 comprises seven unbound pages of yellowing paper sheet music. Chemical analysis has confirmed that the ink on the paper is made of a mix of a solution of tannic acids with ferrous sulfate and gum, consistent with a recipe for ink contemporary with the paper's estimated year of production, 1500 CE. Each page contains eight bars of a contrapuntal polyphonic Baroque choral composition with overlapping harmonies written for bass, baritone, tenor, and soprano or castrati vocal parts. None of the script is legible, with the exception of the rubricated capitals interspersed throughout the piece. Anyone who touches SCP-381 abruptly begins to sing from the beginning of the composition in a range suited to their age and gender, but with professional level competence. By measure, other voices will have joined. Such voices emerge from the air around the SCP and sound like a choir singing lyrics in Latin that translate to data expunged. When the singers reach measure, all non-Roman Catholic Christians in the area, including the singer if applicable, will spontaneously burst into flame that extinguishes only upon cessation of life function and cannot be extinguished by any available means. The flame is otherwise normal emitting heat and light as would be expected. SCP-381 was recovered by a Foundation agent in Spain on It was found in an unopened envelope, sealed with the arms of Philip II of Spain, along with the preserved skeleton of a messenger. Further examination of the skeleton revealed probable cause of death as data expunged. Along with SCP-381, the envelope contained a written note to Her Royal Majesty Elizabeth I on the event of her coronation, expressing Philip's congratulations and wishes for a prosperous rule, and the contents of the envelope are noted as a composition to rival the beauty of even your majesty. The missive is dated 28th of December, 1558. Addendum 3811 Research in the Vatican Archives by Dr. with the help of Cardinal has revealed a work commissioned by Pope Paul IV matching the description of SCP-381, though no mention is made of any unusual combustive properties. The piece was commissioned from Italian composer who notably vanished after he data expunged. Although this information is largely irrelevant to the status of the SCP today, it is of great historical interest when framed in the politics of the Protestant Reformation and Catholic Counter-Reformation. General Bowie is obviously not the first to try to weaponize SCPs. Dr. Item Number SCP-373 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-373 is to be kept in a containment locker at Site-38. Research into SCP-373 and SCP-373-A iterations is to be carried out by authorized personnel. Grounds for immediate revocations of testing privileges include, but are not limited to, recent loss of loved ones, testing privileges suspended for five years, any history of abuse or inability to follow orders as per containment procedures for other SCPs, testing privileges revoked permanently, any past association with paranormal research or investigative groups, testing privileges revoked until approval given by site director, or any unusual or persistent interest or obsession with SCP-373. Testing privileges revoked permanently. Note from head researcher The potential implications of this device for both SCP-373-A entities and their former loved ones require a certain degree of composure with regard to its use. Quite frankly, we may be creating these beings rather than channeling them. Personnel unable to react responsibly with that degree of power 
are not to be allowed access. Note from head researcher, testing with D-class personnel to be carried out as per addendum 3734. For maximum efficiency in gathering intelligence regarding SCP-373-A entities, all records used with SCP-373 should be 33.5 RPM vinyl albums, with lyric-heavy songs or spoken word tracks, audiobooks, comedy albums, and other principally speech-based records are encouraged. Principally instrumental or orchestral music is forbidden. Description SCP-373 is an antique disc phonograph player. Markings on the machine indicate it was built in 19... An additional label indicates that the device was modified in late 1940 at a facility called Laboratories, Inc. The device is composed of a crank-operated turntable embedded in a wooden case, a tone arm with an aluminum stylus, and a slightly tarnished silver horn. SCP-373 appears to have the ability to modify the audio of any record player on it according to particular patterns. Specifically, research has demonstrated that approximately every fourth word or phrase will be altered from the originally recorded song or monologue. These new words can be organized sequentially to reveal what appear to be messages or statements from a series of unknown entities. These entities have been named SCP-373-AX, with X to be replaced with a numerical identification as entities are discovered. The entity is able to communicate for the duration of each instance of the playing of the record. Upon the next playing of the same record, the same entity will be speaking, but will claim not to recall the previous conversation. Due to the stilted nature of the communication, it is rare for the entities to communicate any significant amount of information to Foundation researchers before the end of the record. However, research has demonstrated that two-way communication is possible by lifting the needle from the record while it spins and speaking into the horn. Any attempt at useful communication requires both parties speak while the record spins at the speed at which optimal playback was intended. All SCP-373-A entities report that speaking into the horn with the record slowed or stopped results in a high-pitched squeal for the entity, and vice versa. Testing with anomalies such as SCP-043 and SCP-1668 did not initially produce data. However, analysis of audio taken during testing has shown the presence of at least two distinct breathing patterns being broadcast from SCP-373. Further scheduled testing is currently under consideration. Addendum 3731 Abridged Log of SCP-373-A Entities Entity SCP-373-A-3 Run-Through Number 1 Record Painkiller by Judas Priest Notes An early attempt at scientific analysis of the phenomenon both the choice of music and questions were largely arbitrary. Two-way communication not yet understood. Full lyrical output is included below to demonstrate effect. All future entries will include only relevant utterances. Results Playing of track 1, Painkiller, resulted in the following lyrical output. Faster than a hello, terrifying scream. Enraged hello, full of anger. Who's half man and there machine rides the metal can breathing smoke and anybody closing in with here soaring high he is me painkiller this is is painkiller planets devastated mankind's this its knees a savior what from out the skies hell answer to there is through boiling clouds I thunder blasting bolts don't steal Evil's going under, no, wheels. He is what? Painkiller. This is I've, painkiller. Faster than a dun, bullet. Louder than an, please, bomb. Chromium plated, it's metal. Brighter than a, so, suns. Flying high on dark. Stronger free and, and. Nevermore and captured. Cold. Been brought back here. The grave. Entity. SCP-373-A3 Run-Through 8 Record Painkiller by Judas Priest Notes First consistent and notable demonstration of two-way communicative potential. 
Communication redacted to relevant utterances for convenience. Result. The following interview was carried out by researcher Kim with entity SCP-373-A3. Kim. Speaking as record begins. Needle up. Hello. Please try to stay calm. You've had an accident, and we are working to save you. Can you tell us your name? SCP-373-A3. Hello. Oh, thank goodness. I thought I had died. Kim, could you please tell us your name? SCP-373-A3. My name is Mary Turner. I had a dream. I thought they hanged. Kim, you're okay, Mary. Can you tell me what you see? SCP-373-A3. All dark. No light. Just your voice. Please help. Kim, we're very close to getting you out. Just hold on tight. Can you tell me where you live and what day it is? SCP-373-A3. Valdosta in Folsom County. Is my baby okay? Kim, it's fine, ma'am. Can you tell me what year it is? SCP-373-A3. What you mean? It's 1918. The record ends. Flipping the record results in the conversation beginning again, as in all other tests. Entity number. SCP-373-A24. Run through. Two. Record. Item Pi-2. Notes. Item Pi-2 is a vinyl record pressed by Site-38 for testing purposes, consisting of a rapid, though clearly audible, reading of Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities. The speed at which the book is read allows for approximately 720 words per minute, increasing the potential conversational ability of the ensuing SCP-373-A entity. Result. The following is the interview between researcher Kim and SCP-373-A24. Kim. Hello. There's been an accident. We're trying to get you out, but we need you to remain calm. Can you tell us what the last thing is that you remember? SCP-373-A24. Harry, is that you? Kim. I'm sorry. I can't understand you. What is the last thing you were doing? SCP-373-A24. Harry, it's me. It's Susan. The car skidded on the ice. Where are you? Kim, appearing distressed. Wait, Susan? Susan? Oh my god, Susan. Are you in here? Assistant Researcher Lucas. Harry, we can't tell them. Kim. That's her, Joey. That's my wife in there. To SCP-373. Sweetie, it's me. Oh god, you've been gone for almost a year, but you're back now. Lucas. Security, we need security in here. He's losing it. Attempts to restrain researcher Kim. Kim. Knocking down Lucas. Grabbing SCP-373's horn. Shaking. I'm going to get you out of there. Just wait. Several agents enter the room and drag researcher Kim out by force, knocking SCP-373 to the ground in the process. Experiment ends. Damage to SCP-373 repaired. Researcher Lucas's injuries were treated. Researcher Kim's attack against Foundation agents attempting to restrain him led to his termination. Addendum 3732 SCP-373 entities have been showing a greater tendency to present themselves as relatives or close friends of Foundation personnel in the last two months. This has begun to take place in spite of deliberate efforts to choose records at random. Statistical probability suggests it to be highly unlikely that we have been selecting these particular individuals without some influence on the part of SCP-373, requesting a halt to testing until a pattern can be discerned. Researcher Lucas. Addendum 3733. Request approved. Head Researcher. Addendum 
3734. Four different researchers have been caught over the last three weeks attempting to access SCP-373 for personal purposes. In one instance, a researcher successfully began to use a record already believed to contain one SCP-373-A entity, at which point he was able to communicate with his deceased daughter. Present opinion among Site-38 Command is that SCP-373 is deliberately manipulating its users into emotional distress. Additionally, given the disregard for security protocols being shown now by experienced Foundation researchers, in the face of SCP-373, we are forced to conclude that the object becomes increasingly determined to force individuals to use it as time passes between usage, much in the way predators become increasingly desperate as time passes after feeding. Suggesting that D-Class personnel be allowed to use SCP-373 twice weekly in order to prevent further deterioration of conditions here. Researcher Lucas. Addendum 3735. Request approved. Head Researcher. Item Number SCP-333. Object Class. Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-333-A 1 through 1618 are to be stored in a standard secure containment locker, within sight, accessible only by personnel possessing level 3 clearance or greater, with authorization of at least two clearance level 4 personnel. As testing with SCP-333-B and SCP-333-C has concluded, any performance of SCP-333-A is strictly prohibited. Description SCP-333-A are 1,618 identical copies of a musical score, of unknown title and origin. When the score denoted by SCP-333-A is performed by an orchestra of sufficient size, SCP-333-B manifests. The chamber SCP-333-A is performed in may be entered normally. However, roughly three minutes into a performance, Anything leaving the chamber arrives in SCP-333-B. Re-entry of the performance hall from SCP-333-B is possible, given it is temporarily integrated into SCP-333-B. SCP-333-B appears to be a metropolitan area, devoid of any signs of habitation, past or present. Due to its nature, it is unknown when SCP-333-B was constructed, using what materials, by whom, or even if it was constructed in the conventional sense at all. For as long as performance of SCP-333-A continues, SCP-333-B may be traversed. Following cessation of a performance, SCP-333-B dematerializes, along with anything within at the time. Instrumentation left within suggests that unless a performance of SCP-333-A is occurring, SCP-333-B experiences no passage of time and may not exist at all. SCP-333-C is a highly aggressive entity of variable appearance and composition residing within SCP-333-B. All manifestations of SCP-333-C have proven much more durable than its composition would suggest, requiring considerable firepower to terminate outside of SCP-333-B and possessing apparent invincibility while within. Should SCP-333-C manage to escape SCP-333-B, it will remain until the next time SCP-333-B manifests unless terminated. Following termination, SCP-333-C will dematerialize as well. Addendum 333-1 SCP-333-B will not fully manifest unless SCP-333-A is performed by a minimum of 49 musicians within a single concert hall. Larger numbers of musicians appear to correlate to a larger and more complex metropolitan area. Additionally, simultaneous performances in differing locales result in integration of all concert halls within which SCP-333-A is being performed. SCP-333-B could hypothetically serve as a means of rapid transit between Foundation facilities. Addendum 333-2 the content of all 1,618 original instances of SCP-333-A have been observed to change following each performance. All remain identical to each other. 
Copies of SCP-333-A do not display this polymorphic nature. Addendum 333-3 Changes undergone by SCP-333-A appear to constitute the inclusion of motifs, representing any foreign materials left behind by exploration teams. Given that copies of original SCP-333-A do not update to reflect material within SCP-333-B, it may be possible to selectively manifest materials, and possibly even personnel, within SCP-333-B. A more in-depth cost-benefit analysis will follow. Addendum 333-4 Visual, Chemical, and Mass Spectrometric Examination of Structures within SCP-333-B indicates their composition is directly dependent upon the composition of instrumentation utilized for the corresponding performance of SCP-333-A. Additionally, it appears that the better a particular instrument is played, the less its composition is reflected within SCP-333-B. Given that structures within SCP-333-B are always of similar composition to the instruments utilized, it has been suggested that these structures may not have a finite composition. However, Considering errors cause the composition of a particular instrument to feature more prominently, it is also possible that corruption of SCP-333-B is unavoidable due to general inability to perform SCP-333-A precisely enough. Experiment logs SCP-333-AB 1 through 9 are pending declassification. Addendum 333-5 Cost-benefit analysis regarding SCP-333 as a foundation asset. Rapid Long Distance Transit If used for transit between facilities, SCP-333-B could allow for rapid dissemination of SCP objects in the event of a containment breach. This risk should not be taken lightly. Cloning of personnel, items, SCP objects, etc. Effectively granting the foundation access to infinite resources. A contingency plan in case of or class events. Personnel critical to the operation of the Foundation, a cache of useful SCP objects, and a store of various provisions and resources could be left within SCP-333-B. This would ensure their survival, provided performance of a suitable copy of SCP-333-A may take place. A garrison and armory. The song itself could be utilized as several different Foundation facilities simultaneously. Particularly dangerous Euclid and Keter objects could each be deposited in their own instance of SCP-333-B. If SCP-333-A is performed as it was prior to an SCP object being deposited, SCP-333-B will manifest without the SCP. If SCP-333-A is performed as it is following an SCP object being deposited, SCP-333-B will manifest with the SCP present. Performances of identical copies of SCP-333-A could take place in several locations, allowing access to the prospective facility from several places. A kill switch to sever SCP-333-B from any adjoining facilities is strongly advised. The risk of accidental discovery of the SCP-333-A should be carefully considered before any utilization of the SCP-333-B for these purposes takes place. Note, the contents of Addendum 333-5 have been struck through. Consult Addendum 333-9. Addendum 333-6. SCP-333-C is capable of leaving SCP-333-B. Any sighting of SCP-333-C within SCP-333-B is grounds for immediate evacuation and cessation of SCP-333-A performance. Addendum 333-7 Composition of SCP-333-C appears linked to musical instruments, utilized in similar fashion to 333-B. Closer scrutiny of footage recorded during experiments SCP-333-AB 1, 2, 3, 5, and 8 has found SCP-333-C present appearing to be of similar composition to each corresponding instance of SCP-333-B, making it difficult to distinguish from its surroundings. This likely explains why its presence initially went unnoticed. Addendum 333-8 Operation Unsuccessful Operation losses exceeded 90%. 
a 5 megaton tactical nuclear device was detonated with an SCP-333-B in a last-ditch attempt to prevent SCP-333-C escaping. SCP-333-C was undeterred. Addendum 333-9 Corruption of materials left within 333-B has been noted. This corruption generally takes the form of minuscule changes in chemical composition of objects left within. Though in extreme cases, physical deformation has been observed. Notable examples include malfunction of ROV-13B due to critical circuitry being displaced by and the discovery of D17711's skeletal system being composed of 0.1% brass by weight. I hereby rescind my prior recommendations for utilization of SCP-333. Dr. N. Addendum 333-10 Computer-aided analysis of SCP-333-A and all copies thereof, considered alongside the events of Experiment SCP-333-AB-1-9 through and Operation indicates beyond a shadow of a doubt that SCP-333-A dictates any and all occurrences within SCP-333-B, including activity of Foundation personnel and SCP-333-C. All further testing of SCP-333 is hereby suspended indefinitely. Item Number SCP-332 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Observation Station 55B has been constructed to monitor and study SCP-332. Fences designed to contain SCP-332's stationary effect have been demolished and replaced by a research station dedicated to observing SCP-332 in its dormant state. When SCP-332 enters its active state, all site personnel are to monitor the length and intensity of the sound produced by SCP-332 from soundproofed observation areas until the active state ceases. Any affected civilians are to be detained indefinitely under the cover of an infectious disease outbreak. SCP-1833 has been placed under constant observation in case of any alterations. Description SCP-332 is the class of 1976 Kirk Lawnwood High School Marching Band, located in the town of The band is composed of 30 humanoids, known as SCP-332-1-30. through All 30 instances of SCP-332 wear 1976 band uniforms and play instruments manufactured before 1976. The words Syncope Symphony have been engraved into each instrument. Individuals within SCP-332 do not display normal human behavior and will stand at attention in the center of the former Kirk Lawnwood High School football field. Occasionally, individual instances of SCP-332 have been known to suddenly begin struggling with an unseen force before returning to their normal stance. The reason for this behavior is unknown. No instance of SCP-332 has ever attempted to communicate with Foundation personnel. Instances of SCP-332 do not appear to feel hunger, pain, or suffer from exposure to the elements, and were observed to stand in the same location for over 30 years. Once every 48 hours, SCP-332 will enter an active state. While active, SCP-332 will perform a marching routine. Music played by SCP-332 varies, but it primarily consists of marching arrangements popular between 1967 and 1976. Sounds produced by SCP-332 have a consistent volume throughout the active zone, with the sound fading abruptly outside of that zone. If a subject is able to hear the music played by SCP-332, they will attempt to obtain any instrument near them and join SCP-332 in playing. Subjects affected in this manner, hereafter known as SCP-332-B, will report high amounts of anxiety if unable to obtain a musical instrument within 10 minutes of coming under SCP-332's effect. If they are unable to join SCP-332 within 10 minutes, they will walk with the band and begin miming an instrument as they march with the band and will attempt to replicate the sound being produced by SCP-332 with their voice. Instances of SCP-332-B who join with SCP-332 will march and play until they pass out from exhaustion or hunger, at which point they will be trampled by other instances of SCP-332-B 
and SCP-332. For every 10 SCP-332-B instances who join SCP-332, the area of effect will increase by 300 meters. This radius of effect will expand until all instances of SCP-332-B are terminated or incapacitated, at which point SCP-332's active state will immediately cease. SCP-332 was contained following Incident 332-A, the incident during which SCP-332 was initially activated. Between the point from when it activated to being disabled by Foundation agents, Incident 332-A resulted in the deaths of 40% of Kirk Lawnwood High School staff and students. The school was closed down under the pretense of fire damage, with students, locals, and survivors being issued Class B amnesics. Successful containment for SCP-332 was achieved on 7-19-1976 with a classification of Euclid. Addendum 332-B Transcript of Incident 332-A During initial cleanup operations following SCP-332's containment, a 16mm camera was discovered outside what would have been the first story window of Kirk Lawnwood High School. The transcript of this video, although highly corrupted, is the only record of Incident 332-A. Begin Log 0 to 10 seconds The camera is pointed out a large window, believed to be in the school's front office. Several members of SCP-332 can be seen preparing their instruments on the field. There is no sound. 10 seconds to a minute 34. The camera swings towards unidentified woman number 1. It is believed that the cameraman is speaking to her although no sound can be heard. One of SCP-332's clarinet players can be seen walking by in the background. Minute 34 to 4 minutes and 55 seconds. Section of the tape is damaged. No identifiable content present. 4 minutes 55 seconds to 5 minutes. Picture and sound briefly become clear, and a voice believed to belong to unidentified woman number 1 remarks about one band member's outfit having an unusual attribute although what was unusual about it is not heard. Five minutes to six minutes and two seconds. Static. Six minutes and two seconds to eight minutes and four seconds. Sound and picture return with greatly improved quality, with the cameraman chatting with unidentified woman number one. Unidentified woman number two is heard off screen at seven minutes and nine seconds, referencing a band equipment supplier known as Syncope Symphony and remarking that she was unable to find it with the information that was provided to her. Unidentified man number one, also in the background, claims that he will investigate it at a later date. 8 minutes and 4 seconds to 16 minutes and 22 seconds. Sound cuts out again. Camera is pointed out to the field as SCP-332 begins to perform. At the 11 minute mark, several persons in the audience begin to exhibit signs of distress. At the 11.30 minute mark, the camera is violently jerked away from the floor and dropped. Several persons, including the cameraman and unidentified woman number two, are seen to move around the office in a state of distress. At the 11.45 mark, SCP-332 enters an active state. Unidentified woman number one is seen to exit the office to go outside at the 16 minute mark. 16 minutes 22 seconds to 18 minutes and 45 seconds. Static. 18.45 to 19 minutes. The camera is picked up and pans around the room. Several seemingly deceased persons are visible in frame, including the original cameraman. The camera is briefly pointed out the window, where SCP-332 can be seen playing. The tape ends at the 19 minute mark. End log. Item number, SCP-398. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-398 is contained behind a reverse airlock-style containment chamber locking mechanism, consisting of at least three steel doors and an atmospheric reduction system. A minimum of two guards must be stationed at the doors, remaining at a 50-meter distance from the entrance to the SCP. Description SCP-398 appears to all subjects as a hallway of some description. However, Details differ between accounts. It is first seen as a hallway with white walls, 
plain wooden doors 20 meters apart and approximately 2 meters high, and brass handles, with no special attributes visible. This detail is consistent across all accounts. It was found on location that data expunged, and upon investigation, a dimensional containment site was set up around it. The remainder of the original building surrounding it is unremarkable and has been demolished as such. Addendum 398A Agent sent to research subject, equipped with a handheld video camera with transmission feed. Said agent travels down the hall. Agent, the hall, it's changed. Transmission shows no change in the hall's appearance. Control, changed. How so? Agent, it's different from when I walked in. Dark wood paneled walls, red carpet, and Monet paintings. I like it. Control. Continue, Agent. Go in further. Agent. Roger, sir. Continuing. Agent continues until the appearance of several doors. The door is similar in design to others in the location. Control. Agent. Open the one on the immediate right. Agent. Yes, sir. Agent opens the door to reveal an unpainted and unfurnished room. Agent, it seems to be a cafeteria. Control, a cafeteria? Is there anyone in it? Agent, you can't see it? There's no one in here, just tables, chairs, and a buffet-style layout. Smells real good, and I haven't had lunch yet. Control, noted. Open the door opposite this room. Agent opens the door. It is identical to the first room in appearance. Agent, this one, it's a bedroom. Control, a bedroom. Agent, yes, a child's room. The one I wanted from a catalog when I was a kid because it had Spider-Man sheets. We couldn't afford it. Control, noted. Continue, open one more and return, Agent. Agent exits the room and opens the one next to it. Again, it is identical to the first two. Agent, she can't be here. Control, what agent? What's through this door? Agent, my old girlfriend. But she's married now, expecting a kid. The person in the room can't be her. Control, noted. Return, agent. Agent lowers the camera, and only the floor can be seen. Agent, I want to make it right, baby. Shh, it's okay, don't cry. It was all my fault. Footsteps are heard, and then a soft, incomprehensible crooning from Agent Control. Agent, did you hear me? Agent, I'm so sorry I let you go. Don't you worry, it won't happen again. Control. Agent, you will turn around, close the door, and return to the outside. That is an order. Agent, with all due respect, sir, no, I can make it work this time. At this point, the camera is lifted, and then the feed is abruptly ended. Addendum 398B. After loss of agent, Class D personnel are to be sent into SCP-398. Personnel D-193 and D-216 are sent equipped with handheld video cameras to explore further. Transcription of audio follows. Begin log. Skip to 0 hours 12 minutes 41 seconds. Control. Right. You two. Continue onward. D-193. Understood. Transmission shows the same hall scene in Addendum 398A. D-193 appears to be in front of D-216. D-216's feed shows D-193 walking ahead of him. D-193. There are doors. Shall I open one? Control. No. Continue onwards. The Class D personnel continues. After a few meters, D-216 gasps. Control. D-216. What's wrong? No answer is heard. D-193. He seems to be unconscious, sir. Control. His vitals have dropped out. He's dead. 
Leave him and continue, 193. D-193. Roger, sir. Several seconds pass. D-193. The hall's changing, sir. The feed shows no change. Control. Describe. D-193. It's starting to look like the corridor outside of my old cell. I never wanted to see this again. But it looks like it gets better just up ahead. Control. Noted. Open the door to your left, 193. D-193 opens the door. It is identical to the room seen in Addendum 398A. A burst of breath is heard from D-193. His heart rate rises. Control. What is it, 193? D-193. It's the basement we had in a house I lived in as a child. I always hated it. I never went in. D-193's voice is shaky. D-193. Oh God. Can you hear that? There are voices. Something's down there. Nothing can be heard except D-193's breathing. Control. What are they saying, 193? D-193. I don't know. But I'm getting out of here. It will get better further on. It has to. D-193 starts to run on down the hall. Control. Negative D-193. Return at once. D-193. I can't, sir. It's terrible back there. It will be better further on. Much better. The log continues for several minutes, until the feed is inexplicably cut off. End log. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now, and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.